sermonette here this morning is, no, it's, it's, it's a sermon, here is, what is your life? And for a few moments here, I want to challenge you to, to, to give your life for that which is eternal. Okay? And if at the end of the sermon it goes over everyone's head, I did my part. That's, 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 what, that's what matters. Not, that I, not for me, but the fact that God's word went forth and it's going to accomplish its purpose. I remember we had a game night. We didn't do it this past year, but this year, we did it last year. We had a game night, right? John is like, why don't you throw me under the bus, right? <laughs> I, feel like, yeah, I feel like that's a little preaching. <laughs> we were, uh, we, were uh, we, we played Monopoly. Okay, you you could have won. You totally could have won. But um, we were playing Monopoly. And I don't remember if you were there, right? But you and I were the last two. John, do you remember who the other two or three guys were? Don't throw them under the bus. I don't know. But uh, so we're playing Monopoly. I like Monopoly. How many of you like Monopoly? Okay. No? You're too impatient? Yeah, you guys can't wait. How many of you say, no, I am too impatient for a long game of Monopoly? Be honest. Okay. All right. Um, I can play. And so we were playing, and long story short, long story short, uh, it, it, was, it was just me and John. That's it, right? And John was whooping me, right? I mean, he, he had like hotels and all this kind of stuff. And uh, then uh, I'm thinking, man, but at least I was still in, right? My properties were not flipped over. And, um, but uh, not too long afterward, I started getting a couple hotels. Okay, now John still had, if I remember correctly, more than me. He probably had a bigger stack of money. He probably had a bigger uh, stack of, uh, of uh, properties. But, but, honest answer, honest answer, okay? I started feeling the momentum. I was like, this is good. Okay, I'm starting to feel good about myself. You know how a couple times in a row, you're like, I hope I go to jail. You know when you get to that part of the, part of the game? <laughs> It sounds like so much, maybe someone trucks people, right? It's like, man, it'd be better than having to do another interview. Just send me to jail for the, the short term. Let me, let me do a 30 year sentence. So, you know, you get to jail a couple times, and while you're in jail, the other person lands on your property, and you're like, man, this is good stuff right here. And so I started feeling a little bit of momentum. And I'm thinking, you know, this is good. You know how Monopoly is. Monopoly, uh, the whole point of the game is to accumul accumulate as much wealth as possible, not just in cash, but cash. And properties, and, uh, and and you know they do the stocks and bonds and all that kind of stuff. And then not only that is to step on everyone else on the way to the top, right? That's it. And like the best feeling is when you just wipe all their money out, and you see them, right? You have a huge stack on your side, and on the other side, you see them. They they roll an eleven, and eleven just happens to be Pennsylvania Avenue, and you got a hotel on it, right? And you know they're going to be paying you eighteen hundred bucks. And you see them counting in their head before they even start. They're counting in their heads. They're like, oh no, that's either, you know, that's either Illinois or Indiana. I don't know which one it is, but I know it's one of those right there. And so you see them counting, and then you see them start slowly coming over, right? Okay? And then you start seeing them go through their property, uh, their, 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 their cash. They have no more oranges, which means they have no more 500s. All they have is 100s. And they start counting the brown ones, right? It's like one, two, three. They get to 900, and they still owe you a grand. And they start looking at their properties and their hotels and say, what can I sell off to try? And the best feeling is when you just wipe everybody off the board clean, right? It's, just, it's great, okay? Like the pride sets in and it's, I love it. Now, <clears throat> that didn't happen that time, unfortunately. Uh, but I was feeling pretty good. I was looking towards John. I was looking towards the future. I was thinking, you know what? I think, I think, I really believe if I can hang in here, the momentum is just swung in my direction. I really think I'm going to win this game, Right? Who could have told, you know, two rolls of the dice, you could switch at any time. But right when I felt momentum was going my direction, John looks at his clock, right? Or, I don't know, probably like this. Says, oh man, I gotta go to work. And you were late to work. And just like that, the board was closed. All the properties that I thought I accumulated, the momentum that I thought I had, the hotels that, you know, seriously, it's a little plastic, it doesn't even cost one penny. And we're like, oh, proud about it. I got a hotel. I ain't got no hotel. <laughs> Come on. But I've got hotels, and I've got property, and I've got money. As soon as the board, as soon as he went to work, and I was sitting there all by myself, the game was over. I didn't anticipate it being over when it was over. I didn't anticipate the fact that you're going to have to spring up and go to work real quick. I thought I had it made. I thought from here and to, toward the future, I was going to do pretty well. But just like that, game was over. 
Board was shut, hotels went away, everything went back in the box. Now, same is true with our life. I was on Twitter a couple days ago, and I saw that there was a young man that I played basketball against. He went to Lancaster Baptist School. His name is Josh Tanner, I believe. And uh, some of you may have seen this. He's two years older than me. He has a wife and at least, I believe, a little girl, maybe a couple of children, at least one. Found out he had cancer. He was a uh, law enforcement. He was a CHP, California Highway Patrol Officer. Found out that he had cancer, and within a uh, decent, not, not too much of an amount of time, he died. He left behind his wife and his, at least his one young child. Um, <clears throat> some of you know the story, Tyler Wilkerson, what was he, 17 years old? He went to go to a camp and on the way back, a lady turned in front of them on the freeway, the Jeep flipped, if I'm not mistaken, it got his lungs, he died. Think of my dad now, Thank the Lord, he's still alive, but he was taken out of the pulpit in one day, just like that. Likewise, just like I didn't know that King was going to come to an abrupt halt, it was going to be over, our life and all that we've accumulated, the wealth, the material possessions, one day, and by the way, you don't know when it is, it could be today. One day, Without you know, by the way, God knows the day. It could be today, it could be 50 years from now. One day, the game of your life and everything that you have accumulated is going to close and you're going to be standing before the creator of the universe. You say, oh, but I think I'm going to live long. I eat healthy. I drink my greens. Great. I'm glad you drink your greens and you stay away from bread and meat. The Bible says here, it says, the days of our years are three score and ten. Seventy years is average, the Bible says. And if by reason of strength they be four scores, if you're strong and you live to be 80, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Even if you live to be 80 years old, the Bible says, it's quick, you fly away, you stand before God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, For we must all appear at the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. I just want to challenge you with this this morning. Live your life for eternity. Because even if you live to be 80 or 90 years old, the Bible says that, as John read, your life is but a vapor. Now, there's so many things that I can say. But I do want to say this. If you're going to live for that which is eternal, you cannot live for that which is temporal. sake of time, I'm going to skip some stuff I was going to say here, but let me give you three dangers. Give you three dangers real quick of living for eternity. Three dangers of living for eternity. It's amazing that we live for, we give our entire lives for a house that's going to be eaten by termites someday, or torn down, or left to your wife and her new husband. It's amazing that people work long hours, overtime, and give a huge chunk of their paycheck so they can drive a BMW or a Lexus or a little sports car that one day is going to have its, is, is going to have the header break. They're not going to be able to afford it. They're going to live for a vehicle. The transmission is going to go bad, and it's going to end up one day in a junkyard. But they gave their lives for a house for a car, for a laptop, something that's going to turn into dirt. When you are going to live for thousands and millions of years of et for et in eternity, and we let it live for the temporal instead of the eternal. I want to challenge you to live for that which is eternal here today. What are some dangers for living for eternity? Three of them here. I don't think I'll be too long. I'm actually going to be in high school chapel next. I'm supposed to have a meeting after that. Number one, here it is. Let me give you three things that will poison you living for eternity. Number one, materialism. Materialism. <coughs> Real quick, let's turn to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12.
Luke chapter 12, number 15. Verse number 15. Who's there? Someone read it for me. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Oh, you have it. Thank you. Everyone's like, oh, I have it right here. Go ahead and read it. Who, 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 one of the guys. Go ahead, Titus. And he said unto them, Take me and work up your sins, for a man of life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. He said, Take heed, pay attention, and beware, watch out of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things that he possesseth. And if our life does not consist of the things that we possess, then why do we live our lives to possess and possess and possess and possess and possess? Don't get caught up in the trend to, I gotta get a new car, I gotta live for the house, I gotta live for this. Why? Because it's all going to burn. You're gonna stand before God one day, you're gonna have nothing to show for it. What are you doing for eternity? What do you do with your free time? Is it all spent on and for material things? The Bible says our life consists not in the abundance of the things which we possess. Our life consists on the things not that we can see and that we can hold, but on the things that we cannot see and that we cannot hold. <clears throat> I think of the Sutrix. My hero. By the way, Brother Sutrix is going to be here soon. <clears throat> Tiger Brother Ross said that he wants to go visit Brother Sutrick out there. Is he sure about that, Brother Ross? Some of my heroes. Retired from good jobs. Both of them. All right, if I'm not mistaken, they had two homes, two cars. And what do they do with their retirement? They're now living out in literally the jungles of Thailand amongst a bunch of Spirit worship and witch doctors and animists. Why? So they can take the gospel and try to make Jesus Christ's name known in the uttermost part of the earth. You say, what does that mean? They are shoving the things that are temporal so that they can live their lives, the last part of their lives, for things that are eternal. And what are we doing? We have the best years of our life ahead of us, and what are we getting caught up in? Materialism. How can I make another buck so I can spend stuff on my clothes, my face, my car, my house, my living, and all these things that one day are going to burn? I'm going to ask you today, what do you live in your life? For? What's your life? James asked a very good question. What is your life? He gives us an opportunity to evaluate. What do I think my life is? Well, my life is my career. My life is the things I possess. My life is my bank account. My life is all these different, my social status, my friends, my media, all the things that I do. He says, no, 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 that's not your life. All of this is a vapor. I want to challenge you today. Let's live this vapor of a life that we have for the cause of Christ. The Sutcher did and talked to a lady in my Sunday school class, Ms. Karina, today. Works in the... <clears throat> aerospace industry, doing administrative work, but she has the mindset to do that. I don't think she'd mind me sharing this. She has a rough background, poor, supplemented by the government. She thought, if I could only, if I could only get into the aerospace industry and work to where they let me work from home, they give me my own laptop, they send me on trips, everything's paid for, I have the car, I get to go out and get free meals and hang out with the coworkers. If I could just do that, I will have arrived. And for the last few years, she's got just that. This past Sunday night in my office, she left that job. And this past Sunday night, she told me, she said, you know, I realized when I got everything I thought I wanted, I was just as empty as when I was a single mom. She said, because all those things I thought would bring me fulfillment did not. They left me just as empty. She said, but right now, I'm working on a bus route. You probably know who it is. She said, I'm working on a bus route. I'm trying to make a difference in the lives of in the ladies in our class. And she says, that has brought me more happiness, more joy, and more fulfillment than any of that other stuff that I had in the last couple of years. And yet some of us are looking towards a career, looking towards more money, thinking that if we get the next tablet, the next device, we have more status, more followers, more likes, then we will be happy and fulfilled. You will get there and you will find out that you are just as empty and just as unfulfilled as you are right now. You will never be fulfilled until you live your life for eternity. Number one, materialism. Don't live this life for things and stuff that you can hold and you can touch and you can see. Live it for eternal things like souls, like the gospel, like Christ. Number two, number two, safety. Three dangers that will keep you from eternal living. Number one, materialism. Your, your life does not consist in what you possess. Number two, safety. <clears throat> Acts chapter 
5, verses 25 to 26. Talking of Barnabas and Paul, I'm actually studying through Acts right now. Man, those guys are crazy. Paul goes to a place called Lystra. He walks in, he preaches, people get saved. If I'm not mistaken, the chief ladies and the chief men, they get together. And one minute, this is how it is, one minute, they're all, uh, they're about to worship him. Because he healed a man. But like, yeah, worship him. They actually brought cows. They're going to bring cows and sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas. Like, well, let's make a sacrifice. The gods have come down. The very next verse. They pick up rocks and stone them to where they think he's dead. Talk about fickle people, right? They're like, man, we better get out of this spot. And so they got together, and while they thought Paul was dead, he's laying there. They drove him out of the city. So one, they want to sacrifice to him in one verse. The very next verse, they stone him. They think he's dead. They drag him out of the city. They throw him out there. Because they think he's dead, the disciples gather around him like, man, he's dead. And he stands up. Wow. They say, all right, guys, uh, let's go back and No, let, let's go to another city and preach the gospel first. But a few verses later, you know what they did? They went back to encourage the believers in that same spot where he just got stoned. Wow. We have been taught and conditioned in America that safety comes what? You go on a job site, what does it say? Safety first. A little tricycle at Walmart. Safety first instructions. Seriously, what's the worst that can happen when the kid is two feet from the ground? Everything is safety first. And so that has crept into our spiritual lives where when it comes to God's will, the Great Commission, eternal living, you know what we think? Safety first. I don't see that philosophy in the New Testament. People say the safest place in all the world is the center of God's, of God's will. They got that from the job site, but they sure didn't get it from the book of Acts. Safety first. From the time the kid's one and a half years old, we get them elbow pads and knee pads. Look, a good strawberry is good for the kid every once in a while. Come on now. My kids fall down together, they get a little scared. It's like, you got a strawberry, give me five. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. We get them elbow pads and knee pads. And then now, it's, I'm sorry, I don't tell the basketball players, but they wear these little nylon things. So that, you know, I have to go down here to protect my legs. Yay, 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 yay. Because everything's got to be safety first. Come on now. I got a headache. What do I do? Take a Tylenol. Wear a seatbelt. I'm not against all these things. Oh, we got to give them a shot for... They literally give kids shots when they're like two years old so they don't catch an STD when they're 18 years old. Seriously? Like they want to give them a shot for everything. A shot so they don't get this. A shot so they don't feel that. And again, I'm thankful for medicine. And I'm thankful for helmets. And I'm thankful for all those things. But I think that there's an unintended, unintended consequence of being so overboard on safety. What is it? It creeps into the church to where when God goes out, goes out and tells us to hazard our lives like they did here, we say, oh no, safety first. And some of us, a safety first mentality is going to stop us from ever living for eternity. I want to challenge you. Get over that. Say, oh, but how am I going to provide for myself financially? You're a safety first kind of person. You can't trust God. You don't think God that notices when a sparrow falls can't take care of putting food on your table? Oh, but it's dangerous over there. I heard a story recently. Two, two ladies, actually it's an old sister, 20 years old. Two ladies that went out and <clears throat> They were single, they went out to the mission field, both retired in Africa, dangerous spot. Long story short, some of you probably heard this story, this illustration, you might have heard the preacher that gave it. And they were going around the bend on a cliff, a mountain that had no railing, and they tried to press the brakes and the brakes would not work. And these two ladies went off the edge of the cliff, they plunged to the bottom, two single missionary ladies, older, they hit the bottom and instantly they died and they went into eternity. You say, wow, that's a tragedy. And I'll tell you, when they stand before God, 
having given the last chapter of their lives for Him and for eternity and for souls and for the sick and for, quote, unquote, the least of these. Do you think that the Lord Jesus Christ who died for them and who died for us is going to look and say, what a tragedy. About that same time, there was an illustration of a couple that took early retirement. Lady was 51, the guy was 59. And they traveled all around on their 30-foot boats. You know what their hobby was? Collecting shells and playing softball. That was their hobby. Early retirement, comfortable life, taken care of. And they spent the last part of their life collecting shells, playing softball. And let's say they lived to be 85 years old, never died a tragic death. Which one, I will ask you now, which one was a real tragedy? The ladies who went off the cliff or the ones who lived for the temporal and for themselves? And the problem is, this society, every time you get on Instagram, when you get on Google, when you get on Gmail, they are spending millions and millions of dollars to pump and to advertise to you to buy into the second tragedy instead of giving your life for the first one. So my question for you is, are you a safety first kind of guy? What do you see as the real tragedy? Number three, and I've got to be done. <clears throat> The third danger that will cause us not to live for the eternal, but that will cause us to live for the temporal is friends. Friends. The people we hang out with. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, you have that there. It says, be not deceived. Now this is talking about doctrine, we understand. But there is a very, very real application here. It says evil communications corrupt good manners. Some of you came to Bible college with an open heart, an open mind, and a desire to see God do something in your life. But even here, and you know it, in Bible college, there are people who do not live for eternity. They live for the next game. They live for hanging out with the boys or the girls every open evening they get. They live for making money. They live for looking for a better job, a better career, making another buck. They live for social media. They live for the things, the status that they have, the, the looks that they have. They live for a car. They live for a better job. They live for all those things. And you had a heart to do something great for God. You had a heart to shun the materialism and to shun the safety first, and you had a heart to go out there, man, make a huge impact for eternity. But you've got around some people, and their evil communications, oh, they might not look evil, but they're evil masked in a Bible college student, and they've corrupted your good manners. I want to ask you, are the friends that you have today driving you to live for the things that are eternal? Or are they driving you to live for the things that are temporal? And I want to challenge you today. 